Today we're making a coffee table out of stones. Now I've wanted a stone coffee table for my new patio, but I'm still fairly new to working with rock and wasn't that excited about the idea of having to take care of a 500 pound mistake. So instead I embraced this idea of a cloud of rocks that would allow me to rearrange the modules into different configurations. This way I don't need a forklift or a crane to move my furniture. Stone has become one of my new favorite DIY materials. Availability differs region to region, but it's so permanent and durable and not that hard to cut and shape and drill. This is the way I cut rocks with an angle grinder. I build a little nest around them first to hold them steady, and now I can draw a line all the way around the perimeter. I'm using a diamond blade on my angle grinder to cut about an inch and a half to two inches deep. The depth just depends on the housing of the tool and how close you can get it to the rock. Here I'm using a continuous rim blade, but after talking to a few stone workers, I found that for this type of cutting, a segmented blade cuts faster and lasts longer. The blades cost me about $22 to $25 each, and I've been able to cut over 40 rocks with a single blade. Now that I have the rocks scored, I can slide in a piece of steel. I made a giant cleaver for this, but a crowbar would work just as well. And then I just give it a few taps with the hammer to split them open. I've been using this method a lot lately, and it works pretty well. You are left over, though, with the part of the rock that was broken. And for that, I just switched the wheels on my angle grinder, and this rigid grinding wheel has been smoothing out rock for me real fast. In general, it takes me about 10 to 12 minutes to cut and smooth out each rock. Drilling holes actually presents a few more challenges than cutting the rock, and that all comes down to the drill bits. I've been using drill bits that are meant for reinforced concrete. They work pretty well, but they dull out super fast. Dipping them in water to keep the heat down extends the life, and I start with a narrow bit before working my way up to a 3 8 inch diameter drill bit which is perfect for this steel rod. The steel rod fits in snugly, and I can trim it to length with the angle grinder, but I wasn't expecting to drill perfectly straight holes. It's hard enough with a drill bit and a really good setup, but when you're doing it by hand, you're gonna be a little bit off. But I got a plan for this, and it starts by building a jig. I'm just gonna cut some scrap two by sixes and drill some pocket holes in them with my Craig pocket hole jig. And this is just so I can make a bench light contraption that I'll use for gluing the steel to the stone with all the tops of the stone nice and level. I used to associate the Craig products primarily with DIY and woodworking projects, but more and more I've been using them for concrete formwork and for making quick jigs like this. So I got all my stones lined up and holes drilled. I placed in the steel rods, and what I'm trying to do here is to set the height of the first module. I want all the modules to be the same height, but not all of the stones were the same size. So I want to find the tallest stone that will require the least amount of steel and start with that to set the height. The other thing I'm going to do is drill out oversized holes a half inch in diameter on one side of the rock halves. This is just going to give me a little more wiggle room for setting the stones level when I add the epoxy. So for each module, I end up with one tight hole and one loose hole, which will allow me to solve the leveling problem with some anchoring epoxy. Got my little measuring bench all set up. And I set the first module so that I could measure how much of the rod I needed to trim. Now here I'm just using my powered bolt cutters, but an angle grinder here would work as well. I just hardly ever get to use these bolt cutters and it's always fun to break them out and just chomp away. When I work on a new design, these are the types of steps that I often spend the most time thinking about. Like it's not hard to imagine cutting and drilling, but the process for making a bunch of organic shaped stones all end up the same height is the fun part of the design process for me. So as you can see, the steel rod is wobbling around in the lower half of the stone. And that's okay, the epoxy is gonna end up filling that in. I'm just trying to cut the rods so that it's possible to get the stone faces parallel and level. For gluing rock to steel, I find that Quickcrete anchoring epoxy works really well. It's a two-part system that comes in a single tube, and I just put just a little bit inside the stone holes. And now when I shove in the steel rod, this epoxy takes up the space between the half-inch diameter holes and the 3 8 diameter rods. Now I can just slide them under my little bench and then duct tape the upper stone to the underside of the bench. Now as the epoxy cures, it'll cure with both stone faces being parallel to each other. And if I do this with all the halves of stones, 
I'll end up with a whole bunch of modules that are all the same height, nice and level. I'm sure there's a bunch of stone sealers out there, and I'm not an expert by any means. But I know that stone is a somewhat porous surface, and I also know it's a pretty durable one. So I'm not too worried about nicking or staining. So I'm just using a food grade mineral oil just to soak into the stone and just make it a little bit more water and stain resistant. I got some thoughts on this design to share and another small stone project, but first a message from the sponsor of this video, Factor. This video is sponsored by Factor. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more, plus over 55 weekly add-ons, you'll have a ton of nutrition nutritious and flavorful options to kickstart your resolutions. Factor meals are fresh, never frozen, and are everything I need for a week full of flavorful, nutritious food. Not only are these meals tasty and nutritionally balanced, they're also really fast. They just take two minutes to microwave or seven minutes in a conventional oven. They also have all the nutritional information right on the label for each meal. When I'm getting ready for a photo shoot that requires me to take my shirt off, I really like pre-proportioned meals like this. Factor does the calorie counting for you, and the food doesn't feel like a compromise. Right now, I've been really busy with the hotel project and running all over the place, and Factor makes sure that I'm eating balanced meals instead of grabbing fast food. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code HOMEMADE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. That's factor75.com or click the link below and use the code HOMEMADE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. I thought of this design as a cloud of rocks and didn't have a specific idea for the negative space in between the rock halves. The other thing I did was to match the rocks. So a single rock makes a single module. But I actually think there's greater potential by focusing on the negative space and not necessarily sticking matched halves onto a single module. So what I think I'll do next is cut a whole bunch of rocks and rather than match the halves, I'll organize them by their height. This way with the same set of modules, I could reconfigure the table to have totally different shapes for the negative space in between the halves. I could make it look like two pyramids that taper towards their points, or I could do the inverse and have the appearance of almost a cavity going through the center of the table. If I was to do this as a high-end custom project, I'd probably use stainless steel rods instead of regular steel. That way the reflective shiny surfaces would make the rods seem a little bit more invisible. The advantage of using the same rock halves for a single module is that the tops and the bases have the same amount of surface area, which gives you a lot of flexibility for arranging and clustering these. You can get them pretty tight together. If you consistently put rocks with a smaller surface area on the bottom, you could still get a real tight tabletop at the top, but you'd be sacrificing a little bit of stability in doing so. If you're thinking about getting started with DIY projects involving rocks though, here's a better project that I think you should start with. It's a very simple vase, and the entire thing can be done with an angle grinder and a drill. And taking a taller or a narrower stone, once again, I'm just using my drill to screw a bunch of scrap pieces around it. And this time I'm not even gonna cut it. I'm just gonna use the grinding wheel and grind a flat surface. This is actually really easy to do by hand without any sort of jigs or leveling devices. And I ground this flat bottom in just about five to six minutes. Now for these projects, I used a hammer drill using those concrete and rebar bits that I got from Home Depot. But lately I've been experimenting with diamond abrasive bits that actually go onto the angle grinder. Now you can't drill as deep with those without some special accessories or extension rods, but the angle grinder with the abrasive bits does reduce the chance of the whole rock cracking. With the hammer drill, there's a lot of impact in addition to rotation, and for small, narrow, fragile rocks, it can break them apart. With a hammer drill and concrete bits, I wouldn't go much wider than half an inch diameter for these holes. Now these bits do come pretty long, so you can go rather deep, but it's not like a narrow diameter hole is gonna hold that much water. So I really only think that you need to go as deep 
as the sort of dry stem that you're going to put inside of it. These vases make excellent gifts, and I really like pairing them with local dried vegetation. If I was to make these for a craft fair or a farmer's market, I would probably charge the cost of the rocks plus $45 to $50 each. Because if you set up jigs, I think it's very realistic to make four to six of them in an hour. All of these small rock projects that I've been doing lately are leading up to some really big ones. I've been gathering up larger boulders, ranging in weight from 240 pounds, like this one, to all the way up to almost 400 pounds. And they're gonna play a big part in the interior design of my new house. But as always, I like to start small, knock out a bunch of easy wins, get familiar with the new tool set, and then gradually work my way up to the big projects. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks, bye.